<laughs> never expect normal with Taproot Wizard. Absolutely. And never not. expect normal with Udi. Shit talker, I like extraordinary. extraordinary. <laughs> you have one of the, I want to say, most unique and loudest voices in the space from a, an internal perspective that actually is going against the grain of what the Bitcoin community does. What has been that experience like? At first, it surprised me a bit because I try, sure, I'm a shit poster, 100%, but I try not to like go after people personally, you know, like I'm like, you know, I disagree with the um, with the approach. I disagree with a lot of the things you guys say, but I don't like go. Oh, you, you, and also you got you are ugly. <laughs> you know, I don't do that. I was very surprised that there was. You know, it started a lot of personal attacks like on me, which I'm you know I'm fine as a shit pusher. I'm used to it. It's for whatever. But it, but but it surprised me a little bit. Um, there was that severe. <laughs> What's up, guys? We are back for another episode of the NFT Now podcast. Today's guest is Udi from Taproot Wizards, a longtime mainstay of the Bitcoin community who recently embraced the world of NFTs via Bitcoin ordinals with the most popping project on the chain, Taproot Wizards. You may have seen the shower videos all over social media taking over. We're going to dive inside and learn more about what is driving this cult on the Bitcoin blockchain. Before we do, I want to encourage you to sign up for our newsletter, nftnow.com. Each week, we distill everything happening into the space to actionable insights straight to your inbox. Without any further ado, Udi from Taproot Wizards. Udi, the man, the myth, the wizard extraordinaire in the flesh at the NFT Now podcast. Welcome, man. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? I'm I'm so happy to be here. This is awesome. Like what? Like, like I would a, have thought. You should have thought. I no. As a, as, a, <laughs> as a you know, as a one day, as a once a Bitcoin maxi showing up on an NFT now podcast. This is for me. This is a, a big moment. This is a watershed moment. Yeah. The better question is, how many ETH NFTs do you hold? I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't know. There's a bunch. There's a so, bunch. So, Udi, for our community. I'd love for you to introduce yourself, like, what is the Wizards and like, what is your love for Bitcoin and the ordinals, just so we can set the stage? Right. So I have um, um, been a mentally ill Bitcoin fan for about 10 years now. Um, um, I don't know, it just happened. I used to be a software developer and found out about Bitcoin somehow through that and usual story that I think a lot of NFT people experience too, of just, you know, many sleepless nights, uh, reading and, and, and consuming everything you can about Bitcoin at the time. And, uh, just become, yeah, just became completely mentally ill, you know, parents disown you, friends disown you, <laughs> all of the, the, the usual kind of stuff. Um, and, um, Bitcoin has just been a really big part of my life. And I think it's really, you know, I spent, you know, I worked for Bitcoin companies. I, um, I spent a lot of time trying to get people to onboard to Bitcoin. You know, it's just been like the, you know, that's my adult life basically. Um, and for, you know, for a while, especially people who know me from Twitter pro probably have no, if they, if they know me for more than two years, then they probably have known me as like a sort of a Bitcoin maximalist actually. Um, and, um, probably like the two last years, I kind of changed my mind about that, um, kind of opened up a bit more to other stuff. Um, after fading NFTs for almost 10 years, because, you know, NFTs actually started on Bitcoin in, you know, stuff like Rare Pepe's and, and yeah. Carter Party stuff mm -hmm. and like many, many years ago. So I faded them back then. <laughs> <laughs> I had the opportunity to fade them back then. And I, I think only probably like, you know, in the last year or two, I started to, see nfts as a way to approach new audiences that just maybe did not connect to the bitcoin stories that we've been telling up until now just because you know different people have different priorities maybe not everyone is like extremely enthusiastic about monetary policies for example like <laughs> apparently some people don't don't spend their time talking about this kind of stuff you know so um and and i found that I realized eventually that people are so passionate about this stuff. Like, so this is a way, the way I see it, to transfer the values that I care about to just a new audience. And what are those values? Um, you know, 
self-sovereignty, self-custody, being responsible of your own like future, uh, getting out of the matrix in a sense. Um, in um, in just a sense of community that I do think you know, I know that a lot of um, um, uh, a lot of uh, kind of the newer generation of of crypto people call it Web three, like the Web three community. Um, you said that with so much passion, bro. <laughs> you know, what I, mean? I, I mean, it's a it's because here's the thing: you always we 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 it's always the same thing, but we keep having new names for it every three years. I right. feel like um, the so this, you know we call it Web three now, I guess. Uh, for me, you know, like I guess uh, five years ago, people like said, "Oh, it's the blockchain," yeah, yeah. and now it's like Web three. But it's at the same. At the end of the day, it's the same thing. It's this idea that you can build those communities. That's the way I see it. Uh, you can build those communities that have those shared goals. Um, I think that with NFTs and 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 Web three, I guess it's it's maybe even more accurate because in the past. You know, people would like buy Litecoin, right? In mm -hmm. whatever, in 2013. And then they would change their profile picture in, on Facebook to, right. to the Litecoin logo. Oh, on Reddit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, Reddit. Oh, my yeah. God, dude. I, you're bringing me back. <laughs> TSD, man. 100%. TSD. Yeah. And it was, it's the same thing. It's, I, I really think it's a very similar, like, kind of social phenomenon. It's like a tribal kind of thing, yeah. right? Yeah. 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 But with NFTs, it's kind of more precise. Mm-hmm. Um, because you you allow the communities to be more specific mm -hmm. and you allow every single person to have it, it's like their own identity. Yeah. So I think it's very similar, but it's more precise. And honestly, it gets rid of a lot of the, a lot of the stuff that I used to really dislike about, uh, you know, so-called old coins back in the day was that I felt like, you know, this is about the community. Why are you telling me that this is about flying cars on the blockchain why are you telling me this is about internet of things why are you mm -hmm. telling me this is about ai like it's not it's about a community of people this is what we're really doing and you attaching all of those narratives that don't actually make sense on top of it is what this is the way i always felt about it and at some point I, it kind of clicked for me that wait this maybe this is what nfts kind of are mm. um they get rid of the narratives that are not relevant. Like, why am I buying an Azuki? Not because I think that they're going to build uh, whatever uh, grocery store on the blockchain or the weird things that altcoins used to promise. Um, just because it's a community with shared goals, I find, you know, I find that I can identify with it. I want to be part of it. And I can, you know, I can share in the upside of that community too. So, yeah. So I just found it more precise, I mm. guess compared to altcoins of yore. Well, speaking of communities that people want to be a part of, the Taproot Wizards are on fire. Uh, people are doing showers all over social media, wearing wizard costumes. Yeah, now, this, is a, this is a cult. This is dude, a cult. it's a fucking cult. Did you see the one with the fucking Mustang driving through the... Did you, <laughs> did you see the, the... What was it? It was like a, like a canoe or like a rowboat. There was a boat one. Like, yeah. a boat one. Man, they sat in a Mustang and with, went, in full wizard costumes and went into the shower. They bought the, a the new Mustang. It was, a bought, it was like purchased oh. brand new. Right, so and I'm drove it through car wash. So was right. that was that a bet that the wizard that they, you would get would pay for the oh, no, Mustang? No, but, or? But, no, no, <laughs> but it, it was the mu like. So I'm scrolling through Twitter. I'm going through my morning thing. I'm yeah. like, all right, great, you know. And then I see K Money's little like sad attempt at making the wizard one. I gotta give out. I got you know. What I mean? I was like, all right, all right, all right. And then literally the algorithm was feeding me because there was that one week where it was like you had everyone on Twitter taking showers. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. I don't know how you did it. <laughs> wizard it, costumes were up, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, wizard costume sales, sales, wizard yeah. costumes were up across the nation. Yeah. Like, yeah. Google, Google tried. Yeah. It was like, you know, like you trigger that. And then all of a sudden I'm like scrolling through it and I see this these two guys in a drop top Mustang. Yeah. And I'm like, okay. And they're doing the, I thought they were on their way to the shower, right? Like I'm thinking like, yo, okay, these guys have a fucking Mustang. They're, they're dressed in it. They're probably going to drive in the rain, like something like normal. Mm -hmm. Never no. expect normal. When never, it to <laughs> oh, okay. never expect normal with Taproot Wizard. Absolutely. And not. never expect normal with Udi. Absolutely okay. Not. So Truly. like, we'll, we'll get into that yeah. in a little bit. Oh, it's yes. like, it's shit, shit talker. I like extraordinary. extraordinary. <laughs> All right, so I'm scrolling through this thing, right? And then these two young lads, all right, are literally driving up to a car wash. And I'm like, all right, let's, 
let's see where this goes. <laughs> mm-hmm. The rooftop comes off and they literally go in with the roof off <laughs> and they start wow. fucking washing the car, the foam in it. And the guy is looking straight into his camera and he's like, Udi, I hope I get my fucking tapered wrist in the loudest. And that's when I knew. Yep. I was like, it's this, a cult. It's a cult. It's a cult. Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about that, yeah. man. For those who, who are tuning in, maybe don't know, what, it, what are the Taproot Wizards? How did it come together? And how has it become this cult? Right. So Taproot Wizards um, actually started uh, kind of a long time ago. It started last summer. Um, me and my uh, cult co-founder, Eric Wall, um, have been, if you know, anyone who's been unfortunately tracking our Twitter uh, accounts know that we've been absolutely obsessed with uh, the Bitcoin community, the online Bitcoin community, w- what we call uh, laser eye maximalism and why we think it's not great for Bitcoin. And we really want to change it. Well, we, I don't think we're going to change anyone, but I think we want to bring new, fresh people into Bitcoin that are not the same laser eye folks. So what type of flavor Kool-Aid do you have? Do you have grape or do you have like cherry? <laughs> yeah, that's the, look, you have to have Kool-Aid, but everyone has to have Kool-Aid. But I think um, it, the, the, the wizard itself mm-hmm. is actually a meme from 2013 that um, they used it in the Bitcoin subreddit in 2013. If you think back to 2013, um, the word Bitcoin was not very well known. Most people on the planet did not know that it exists. The few people who heard the, 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 the brand Bitcoin uh, assumed that it was related to crime, you know, drugs, whatever. If you tell someone, hey, I'm interested in Bitcoin, then they take their distance from you. The Silk Road. You yeah, Silk Road. Silk Road, mm-hmm. yeah. that was it. Yeah, 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 yeah that was it. Yeah. Um, so it did not have a very strong brand at the time. And the guys at the Bitcoin subreddit wanted to promote it. They held this contest. The idea of the contest was let's come up with an ad that we can use on the rest of Reddit to pull people into the subreddit. Um, and this guy shows up, um, his, his pseudonym is Maven's Bot, and he shows up with this uh, uh, wizard that looks like it's made in Microsoft Paint. It's not, by the way, but it looks like it's made in Microsoft Paint. and. And it it just says yeah, like sure. it just says like our Bitcoin at the top, magic internet money, and has like a fake button that says join us, and that's it. And it it looks so silly. And it ended up it won the contest, probably won the guy like you know multiple bitcoins because at the time it wasn't worth much. And he put and they put it as an ad. It ended up being the best performing Reddit ad at the time. Uh, so he nailed it like completely like what the community is actually looking for at Reddit at the time. And that was the first time that people started to think of Bitcoin as, okay, maybe it's also like this whimsical, fun, magical thing and not just drugs and, and crime. You know, um, it, 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 a lot of people that I talk to today that say that they, you know, kind of join around that time say, yeah, this is how. Like this, I saw this either on Reddit or in some, you know, news article about it because it was a successful ad. And that's why they even got into Bitcoin in the first place. And we were like, you know, we kind of want to bring that spirit back. Um, we kind of, we, the same way that, that, you know, that they were like trying to get people from outside of the Bitcoin, you know, mini group, mini cult of the, that we're like thinking, hey, we can do it again. <laughs> there are a lot of people. And it's, it's actually, it's, I, I feel like it's such a low hanging fruit, um, you know, the, the Web3 community, right? I think a ton of them have never tried Bitcoin. They never had a reason to, right? They they so they joined like let's say a year or two ago, maybe three. Um, first thing they do probably you know either they buy some stable coins, they buy ETH, they put it on their MetaMask wallet, they start playing around with with OpenSea, maybe DeFi stuff, whatever. They never had a reason to try Bitcoin. They never downloaded a Bitcoin wallet, right? Why would they? They, they it's not part of the it's not part of the thing anymore. So, but you know they already know how to self custody. They already care about the same values pretty much. It's just that when they go online on Twitter to maybe learn about Bitcoin, all they see is laser eyes telling them that they have to eat steak and they can own uh, JPEGs and they have to own guns. And I don't, you know, I don't have any problem with people who want to own guns and want to eat steak. I, you know, love steak. Uh, I just don't think it's relevant. <laughs> no, I, 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 <laughs> you know? But, um, 
for context, I think it's important. A lot of our, yeah. our a lot of our community are what we like to call uh, early entrants or tourists mm-hmm. in this space. You know, mm-hmm. um, I love for you to explain to the community what the laser eye maxis yeah. are and where they come from. Yeah, yeah. Here's an interesting way to put it. You know, crypto punks, right? Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. all know crypto punks. So, you look at the punks, and how many punk derivatives? Do we have oh, like thousands? Countless, un- countless, un- yeah. yeah, like we un- can't even begin. Yeah. Unthinkable number. Unthinkable yeah. <laughs> number. On every single chain, you have like dozens of them, if not hundreds and thousands the punks, of them. The funks, the funks, the this, the that. Yeah. yeah like, and you flip them horizontally and you flip them vertically and you t- change the tint a little bit and you whatever. Upside down, yeah, the this, you the that, um, them, you know, the like, background, the, the whatever. Yeah. You end up now. The noun punks. Like, yo, you name it. Yeah, 100%. Now, if you're a punk holder, you look at this. Sure, some punk holders probably enjoy it. Uh, I don't mind it. Yeah, I'm like memes, some, meme, meme, it, meme it to oblivion. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. But also some some punk holders clearly are yep. not fans. Right, truly. Yeah, and um, I think early on, like 2013, 2014, 15, that's kind of what happened with Bitcoin. Like what what happened was you had Bitcoin, it worked, it was a thing, and then you've had a ton, a ton, endless amount of people just took the Bitcoin code base changed the logo a little bit, flipped it around, changed the colors, whatever, changed the uh, two letters in the name, uh, changed the mining algorithm in a tiny little way, changed, like whatever, like stupid little changes that no one cares about, ended up with thousands of thousands of Bitcoin derivatives, right? Bitcoin Cash and yeah. all these things. Bitcoin Cash, yeah, yeah, that too. You know, thousands of them. Um, and the so I think there's this pretty big, significant part of the Bitcoin community who, got very you know at some point you get tired of this <laughs> you know like even sure some of these bomb people make some money but eventually you know similarly to punk derivatives eventually you know there's not a lot of future it, it, it seems like <laughs> there's not a lot of future in them for the very long term right so people kind of learn to try to protect each other from falling into these scams and and whatever the way they whatever way they view it but then the crypto scene develops um, and other than just Bitcoin derivatives, there's also some other things. There's Ethereum, right? Ethereum is significantly different from Bitcoin. It's not the same thing. Uh, it does things that Bitcoin does not. Bitcoin does things that Ethereum does not. It's it's really, it's not just a fork. Or it's the, apples and oranges. Really it is. Right? Like that's very clear. Really it is. But I think for a lot of the people who were uh, in Bitcoin earlier, for them, it's the same. They're like, okay, it's just another guy showing up and just changing a few more. Okay, they change a little more. But it's, you know, for, from their point of view, we've seen this playing out like you know hundreds thousands millions of times and and there's this disconnect right from their point of view it's it's really about trying to protect their own from from the you know hordes of of scams and they had a very good hit rate because you know 99.99 percent of whatever you could find in crypto scene was scams but over the years it got better so you know ethereum is i would say Absolutely not a scam at all. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of projects who are maybe, you know, somewhere in the middle, but there's also a lot of things who are, you know, prove themselves as valuable or at least prove themselves as desirable um, by some groups, you know. Mm-hmm. And and um, and I think the, the that group of Bitcoin maxis, and I like to call them laser eye maxis because... <laughs> Because well, they they do have laser eyes on their yeah, profile on pictures, their profile, but yeah, but that's al- a thing. Yeah. <laughs> but also, but also because um, the what happened over the years is that they really they 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 no longer talk about Bitcoin at all. They mostly talk about Ethereum and why Ethereum is bad, and they talk about you know uh, what NFTs and why NFTs are bad, and and DeFi and why DeFi is terrible, and and why Binance is terrible, and why. But they barely talk about Bitcoin because from their point of view, Bitcoin is already perfect. There's nothing to change. There's a, there's also not much to talk about <laughs> because it's pretty much established, and they just talk about how everything else is shit. Um, so I don't even like to use the term Bitcoin maxis to describe them because it has nothing to do with Bitcoin really. Um, that's why I, I like saying laser eye maxis because it's visually it's correct and also <laughs> it kind of represents their tunnel yeah, vision, right? Yeah, yeah, the yeah. narrow the narrow sidedness of it. You've been consistently shit posting about them. Mm-hmm. Let's talk about this, all right? Because yeah. you you have one of the I want to say most unique and loudest voices in the space from a, an internal perspective that actually is going against the grain of what the Bitcoin community does. These what, days, yeah. Yeah, these, these days, days yeah. specifically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, what has been that experience like? Because, you know, 
speaking of cults, right? Yeah. Like Bitcoin in itself has a very cult like mentality. What has been the reception of your point of view and your perspective, you know, like with the Michael Saylors of the world, these yeah. dev, like these types of things? Well, you know, I'm not I'm not very close to Michael Sayer. I don't know right. what he thinks about me, but but a lot of, you know, a lot of other people in the kind of laser eye camp that I considered uh I used to consider friends really, you know, at the very least took a distance, but usually it was they're a lot more proactive than just taking some distance from me, which surprised me a bit. You know, I grew up now and I understand that they probably were never friends, right? Mm. And that's why it happened, but yeah. but like um uh at first, it surprised me a bit because I try. Sure, I'm a shit poster, one hundred percent. But I try not to like go after people personally. You know, like I'm like, you know, I disagree with the um, with the approach. I disagree with a lot of the things you guys say. But I don't like go. Oh, you, you, and also you got you are ugly. <laughs> you know, I don't do that. Um, and um, I was very surprised that there was. You know, it started a lot of personal attacks like on me. Which I'm, you know, I'm fine as a shit poster. I'm used to it. It's for whatever, but it, but but it surprised me a little bit um, that it was that severe because I thought, well, okay, I just have a different opinion, and you know, but um, I think that the Bitcoin cult, what's kind of special about it in a bad way, is that um, I do. We need cults. Cults are good, I think, but um, the Bitcoin cult is exclusive. It does not want to bring people in. It it kind of thrives on rejecting people from the cold. Mm -hmm. And that is, uh, I do, just the math doesn't work out to me. Like, how can that work <laughs> for, for you know, it, it can work for individuals, right? Like, mm -hmm. for sure, certain people can work for their own personal brand. That's for sure. But for Bitcoin and also for the existence of the cold, like if you keep removing people and you don't add new ones, <laughs> the math doesn't add pretty up. Quick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, obviously with most um, cults in the space, they are very much all about adding new people in, right? Mm -hmm. um, the Bitcoin one, and I want to, uh, the, the Bitcoin one that I'm talking about online is not, but I want to kind of qualify that a little bit. I, I have a ton of Bitcoiner friends, right? Um, and most Bitcoiners I know um, are not laser eye maximalists on Twitter. The vast majority of them are not, right? Um, it's actually a very small group. I don't know. I assume it's, I don't know, a few thousands, a few tens of thousands of people, which is, you know, it's not nothing, but it's not, you know, compared to the base of Bitcoiners, which I would assume is is in the eight to nine figures somewhere, um, it's nothing, right? But they're quiet and the, the most of them are quiet. They're not, you don't see them on social media, you know, either because some of them are retired. Many of them are retired. Some of them are, you know, building shit. They're too busy to ramble about stuff on Twitter. Um, and the the online space was kind of, I feel like kidnapped by this, this group of laser eyes, unfortunately. And they, they're good. They're good people. Uh, it's not like, I don't think they should be the representatives of the Bitcoin brand. That's I think that hurts point. Bitcoin. That makes sense. And you know, I know we, we kind of talked about setting the stage for Taproot Wizards. I know that you you rubbed a lot of these Bitcoin maxis the wrong way when you actually inscribed uh, the, the first the first one. And, and so let's let's talk a little bit about that and uh, and what and how that uh, kind of gave birth to the project. Yeah. So we um, as I said before, we were thinking about this project for like six months plus before we knew about ordinals at all. Um, we knew that we wanted to somehow like connect the ideas of NFT communities with Bitcoin. Uh, we had, you know, we had definitely some of the art made. We had definitely like a lot of, you know, thoughts about how it's going to work, but we didn't have the very important technical part of ordinals, you know? So as, as we were trying to figure it out, we, we were kind of, you know, waiting <laughs> to see if, if something comes up and, Amazingly, something did come up, and when we found out about Ornals, so first time I found out about Ornals was uh, my good friend Dennis, who's also um, part of the Temple Wizards team. He was he was uh, reaching out to me, and he said, "Look, uh, we, uh, we there's this thing Ornals. You have to look at it. It's amazing." That was you know after there were probably when like five this? inscriptions. Like when that was, was this? when was this vote timeline. I, mid-January. So oh, we're talking about five you know, inscriptions. Wow. 
about yeah. five and straight. Like I didn't, I didn't even look. This yeah. January, twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. And now we're at a million inscriptions. And now we're at a million. Past it. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. So he, he he told me he was like literally the first person um, who who was really serious about ordinals, I think, in in the universe. And he. <laughs> He, he told me, look, you got to look at this. And my immediate response to him was, this is stupid. Don't bother me with this, please. <laughs> I don't have the time or the... Ba- like, it's not going to... Now we have a canary. Anytime That's Rudy's right. like, hey, this That's is right. stupid. Now we know. Yeah. Now we know. Exactly. Now we have to go down on it. Exactly. So that that was my immediate response. I was like, look, it's not going to catch on. No one's going to care. Like, it's not like it's... It's it's way past this time. Like, NFTs are not going to happen on Bitcoin. We're going to need to do something else. And... It, that's that that was my first thinking. But then um what I realized was that those so I have my canaries too. And I, what I realized that the the laser eyes uh that I love so much were really pissed about this. Really, really pissed about this. Very, very early. Like it didn't really even exist. There were no inscriptions out there. There were maybe, you know, you know, two digit of inscriptions out there. Um and but they were really, really mad. Um and I was like, well, if they're really mad about it, then there's got to be something there. <laughs> <laughs> there's got to be something there. Like, uh, let's see. Let's look into it. And what we found is that the the it's not just NFTs on Bitcoin. Like, the dynamics of Ornals are really different mm-hmm. from how, from how you know, NFTs work on Ethereum. And different not in... I'm not even trying to say they're necessarily better but they're different and different is good because that, you know, that, that gives you this vast unexplored space of, of, of something that is new. Um, they're different in two important ways. One is as, as the owner of an oral, it's truly yours. Um, no one can change it. No one can change the image. You know, what happened to goblin towns cannot happen to your ornals. It's yours. It doesn't matter what the creator wants. Uh, doesn't matter what kind of royalty marketplace wars are going on. Doesn't matter, like it nothing matters. Once the creator gave the the ornal to someone else, it's over. This is <laughs> this, is it. this is it. Um it's permanent. So you you guarantee that the image is gonna always gonna be on chain, it's always gonna be available no matter what happens, as long as Bitcoin exists, the 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 image of the inscription is also gonna exist. And it is truly scarce, it is made out of the scarce material. So when you create an Ethereum NFT. You know, you could create easily millions a day, you know, there's no reason why not. Um, it doesn't even have to be expensive if depending on how you do it. Um, but um, with with Bitcoin, there's only four megabytes of block space available every 10 minutes. And you've got to acquire some of it in order to craft your inscription. You've got to acquire, that's the material that you're making your inscription out of. you got to buy it. And there's only a very limited amount of it that's going to be created every day. And so, you know, all of the creators in the world are competing over that very limited How resource. How expensive is this, is this resource? Um, it's supply and demand, right? So you have so you have four megabytes every 10 minutes. That should be uh, roughly 600 megabytes a day, I think. Um, and that's all you have. So it depends how many people want to inscribe on that given day. These days it costs like, what, $30 or so sometimes to inscribe? So it would depend yeah. on the image size, but mm-hmm. um, yeah. That's yeah. what that's been my experience. Yeah. You know, we we inscribed the NFT now logo in the first yeah. fifty thousand inscriptions. So, yeah. Oh, you know. yeah, that's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. That's good. It will always we be. We there. weren't quite in the first five, but you know, yeah. 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 it's a start. Yeah. It's a start. Yeah. It's a start. Yeah. So Udi. So we I'll I'll finish the story about yeah, the four yeah, yeah. megabyte yeah. one. So I'll I'll so we, you know, we realize that there's something here. And I, of course, I don't know if you guys feel this. Whenever I start doing something in crypto, I feel like I'm late. And yes. even and yes. even even back then, yeah. it, it was it was it was inscription number six hundred fifty two when we eventually got it in. I was like, man, we missed the boat. This is like <laughs> 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 we're at a million now, right? But I was like, damn, this is like we need to do something big in order to show that this one is different right. than the rest. And we wanted to also make a statement about you know. Because a big part of it was was about saying this is an alternative way to do Bitcoin things. We wanted mm-hmm. to make a statement about why what we do is different. And what we realized is one thing we could do that no one else did was make a very large inscription and in, just in file size. So just because of a technicality of the way that Bitcoin works, um, usually... Uh, 
if you you can make transactions up to the size that fills the entire block and the block block size limit is four megabyte you can do that but um you cannot use the bitcoin network to propagate that so you need to if you, when you make a transaction you need to somehow have it reach the miners right mm -hmm. and you have the bitcoin network assisting you in, in getting the transaction to the miners and the Bitcoin network will not propagate transactions that are over 400 kilobytes. It's just some protection. The transaction is still valid, but they will not help you to get it to a miner. So what that means is you need to know a mining, someone who runs a mining pool and get in touch with them and get the four megabyte transaction through them. And that's what we did. No one else ever did that in the history of Bitcoin. No one else had any transaction that is bigger than 400 kilobytes. So we or eh, maybe maybe it was a little bigger, but not not as big as what we did, which was which was four megabyte. And because it was so unusual, people immediately noticed. They didn't know what it is, what it means, what what's going on. But uh, a lot of people, especially in the Bitcoin camp, like kind of noticed. Wait, this is the largest transaction in history by far. How did this even happen? A lot of people did not think it was even you know technically possible. Um, so that was that that was a very big statement as far as the Bitcoin community is concerned, especially because for them, they're like, wait, we thought you're not allowed to do this, and you still did this to do something we hate. <laughs> <laughs> um and they they got really upset. They got really upset. We already knew they were gonna be upset, but we thought, okay, if we do it in a <laughs> You really push the buttons yes. on them there. Yeah, yeah. You, you weren't just like you yeah. you, 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 you poked the bear. You poked no, no, the bear. You, you really, didn't poke the bear. He woke it up. He punched yeah. it in the face. You know what I mean? That's facts, how, that's how... <laughs> and and you know, of course it was completely intentional, right? Because of course. because what we wanted to say was um look, what we're gonna do with Tapo Wizards is we're gonna do whatever the Bitcoin protocol allows us to do. I'm not here to like talk about which transactions are moral and which transactions are immoral or whatever of that kind of bullshit. Like we the Bitcoin protocol allows it, we're gonna do it. And that was the message we kind of wanted to send with this. And I think I think a lot of people in the Bitcoin camp were truly confused. They're like, uh, wait, how is this even like they must have cheated? It was almost somehow. like you, like you kind of started breaking the matrix, like you became yeah. the glitch, right? Like mm -hmm. you're like, wait, wait, what do you mean? The so what it sounds to me is like the ph the philosophical elements of Bitcoin. You started challenging them, and you said, yeah. and you went into the technical elements of Bitcoin. You're like, hey, if the if the network allows me to do this, I will push the envelope to do that. Right. Not philosophically, but actually practically. Yeah. And like that started p pissing off the wrong people. So well, the right people. The right yeah. people. Yeah. <laughs> and you but started yeah. getting your signal. So, at what point? Did crypto Twitter pick this up? At what point did NFT Twitter pick it up? Um, I think it was, you know, relatively early in the first in the first few days. Um, it took you know it took a while for people to to you know kind of catch up on on the fact that something on on what happened because you, yes there was this big four megabyte transaction. Most people didn't know what ornals are, so they didn't know where to look to understand uh, what the transaction was. Um, but it was big enough for, you know, big, you know, news outlets were like trying to figure it out there. They had like, you know, articles out about how a four megabyte transaction happened, but they're not, they're not sure why. It became a thing for like a couple of days of people trying to, we we decided we're going to remain silent and not say anything. It became like this little game for a day or two with people trying to figure out what exactly happened. Um, in the inscription itself, um, it was, again, it was the simple wizard that we kind of modernized for, for, like you know the stuff that we were trying to say today, but we put the the URL for Discord on there, uh, like tablewizards.com. Anyone who went there is went directly to the to the Discord, and as because so many people were trying to figure out what was going on, and a ton of people like entered the the Discord just through that, like right. I don't know, like thousands of people just through this one thing that we I didn't even say anything about it for yeah. a few hours, you know. Um, so that was really cool. Um, and that got, that picked a lot of people's interest, and we ended up getting this really interesting mix of which is really exactly what we wanted. So we we're like very fortunate that it, that it worked out. We got this very interesting mix of people. Some are like kind of Bitcoin OGs, really, who yeah. who, who kind of agree with our view that that Bitcoin needs to be more open minded, and they're kind of sick of the way that things kind of happen in the last couple of years. And the other group is is a bunch of NFT people who are like, yeah, we think inscriptions might be interesting. Like th these guys 
whenever there's some new alpha, there's right, there's on top of, they're on top of it within a day, right? So they were like, hey, uh, I don't know how Bitcoin works, but like, this looks cool. So I'm going to figure it out. And they're all over there, like trying to install a Bitcoin node and, and trying to understand how that works. And, you know, and I'm like, man, I've got like thousands of people on my hands installing Bitcoin nodes. That never happened in my 10 years of history in Bitcoin. Um, so I was like, look, there's something here. Yeah, there's, there's probably something here. Um, yo, there was something there. Yeah. I started getting fucking phone calls at two in the morning. Like, yo, come on this Bitcoin Discord. I was like, yeah. what? Yeah. And then people yeah. were like telling me, I was like, what's going on? I'm like, three, four different collectors started hitting me up. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's when I hit you up. Yeah. And you're like, yes, I'm on top of it. Yeah. And, I, yeah. and we, and we <laughs> and those, uh, remember those, those not financial advice spaces. Those yeah, early those spaces with, dude, with, with, shout out Trevor. Shout you, you, were yeah. on, you were in you on them, dude. Yeah. And like, it, everything was over the counter. OTC. Yeah. yeah, every because there, yeah. there was not a single wallet, there wasn't a single exchange. Yeah. It felt like and, the early days, bro. It was, <laughs> it was, I was like, "Yo, can I trust this guy?" That I, like, it, it, it was like spreadsheets and wizards and, wizards and, and like, like, <laughs> yo, like, I was like, "What?" And people plugging in and like, what was it? Um, the thousandth? Uh, was it like a sixty nine? What, what What was the one that was like like it was a historic one? Like a like a like a substan four twenty? What was four twenty? Like no, there was like a thousand inscription, like an ordinal that was like the number sixty nine or something, and like there was like a there was something like that. Yeah, I think maybe yeah. maybe a hundred thousand was just someone ins yeah, inscribed like the number the 69. number sixty nine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. People were like because you didn't really know like what number it was going to be. You know, it's like on the block, and so it was like it was really fascinating, but it had this energy, it had this yep. real excitement. And one of the things that I mentioned in those spaces, and I want to mention it now because I think it's really significant, is that when we think about mainstream adoption, we think about like tapping into different communities and crossover potential. It's like there's a massive untapped market with the Bitcoin community there yeah. when we think about NFTs. And what was really interesting is I know a lot of people who. The, for, for especially entrance into this space, a lot of people got into crypto in order to buy NFTs, right? right yeah. And so you have a lot of people come from the creative economies who weren't necessarily there in 2013 or weren't there in the, you know, the early days of like, you know, um, uh, of Bitcoin and the like. And for many of them, they have not really interacted with Bitcoin's ecosystem. And so like all of a sudden you have a lot of these people who had come in, you know, we bought their first Ethereum just to buy an NFT or the like all of a sudden learning about Bitcoin, even anecdotally on our staff, we have some young staff members, shout out AJ, our, our social media coordinator, he was like trying to learn more about Bitcoin, you know, and I, and that was a really exciting and interesting thing to see. I got, I got in yeah. trouble with my wife. My wife's like, you're not touching our Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I want to just want to describe a few sets. I just want to describe a few sets. She's like, you're not touching no, it. You know what I mean? No. Like, you know, leave that, like, leave like, that shit in the vault, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. But what you had was all of a sudden a whole segment of yeah. the space that previously had no real use case for Bitcoin or Bitcoin did not provide like, like a, a real, like, like they weren't, they weren't focused on Bitcoin. They didn't have necessarily a relationship with that, with that, with that technology, that community, all of a sudden learning about Bitcoin, all of a sudden understanding where this space comes from. And as someone who came into crypto in 2013 through the Bitcoin white paper, that was really exciting for me to see. And, and I'm sure it must've been exciting for you oh, to yeah. see as well. Oh yeah. Yeah. Because we just I, f I feel like in five years, maybe even six years, we have not seen that much interest in Bitcoin from the rest of the crypto community. Dude, like, hands down. Yeah. Hands down. Because like I, 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 I DCA into Bitcoin every month, right? But like I've been buying since 2000, January 2014, right? So, so I've, been, I've been really interested into it. I remember the only reason why I didn't get into Bitcoin in 2011 or 2012 was because the only way to get a Bitcoin was on eBay or Craigslist mm -hmm. off a USB. And I was like, what? What is this? Like, I'm not touching this, you know? And like, finally, Coinbase came around. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I still remember your whole computer was your was your wallet. Yeah. Right? And to your to that point, it, but what also makes it really exciting, I think, from a perspective, is, like, the potential for upside beyond just the speculative nature of the, of the price, right? Like, now you have actual trading value. There's a marketplace. Right. There's incentives. Yeah. There's, like... You guys, you probably have like so many early ordinals that you can actually now have life changing generational wealth if you really wanted to start putting them out there and saying, maybe, hey, maybe multiple generations. Yeah, multiple <laughs> generations. Yeah, 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 at this point. But before that, having a Bitcoin was only a long tail element of potential, mm -hmm. right? Like, what's the, what's the thing? Like, 
I have a I have a theory that like being being a coiner, just having one Bitcoin is going to be in the next 10, 15 years, it's gonna be like, well, you hold a whole Bitcoin, mm-hmm. right? Because like there's yeah. so many limited. But now it's like it expands the the purview the and the ecosystem, ecosystem yeah. of what's possible in this ornament and that creates this upside, right? Because at the end of the day, we all know this. Everyone's in NFTs for one main reason. Of course. And that reason is to make money. Right? Showers. Showers. <laughs> <laughs> Hygiene. <laughs> Hygiene. You know, the community is amazing. The art is really pushing it. The technology adoption is really great. But the promise of financial upside is still pretty much at the core yeah. of what our community really is embracing our building, right? It's kind of like the early days of the internet. It's like, hey, we're here to connect with each other, but like, how do we commercialize this? How can mm-hmm. we bring co- like cap- capitalism into it? And I think this is the first time, from my personal opinion, that I see the potential upside of ownership with Bitcoin beyond a financial instrument. Mm, right? Yeah. Yeah, like, you know, one of the things that I often think about is, you know, also, like, you know, I, I bought my first Bitcoin in 2013 at the exact top of that market, you know, it like crashed like two weeks later. But I was like, cool. No, I believed in the I believe in technology, all that. Um, but it, it really was uh, down. But it down the road once, you know, NFTs were kind of like what made me make that full time jump. Right. Because all the, I've never been a finance guy at the end of the day, you know, like I've always believed in the promise of decentralized technology and Bitcoin and everything like that. But like for me, I've always been focused on like art, music, culture, that, you know, that. And so NFTs was like the technology I believed in for a very long time, finally disrupting those fields and in a way that can also empower creators. And this is like bringing that element to Bitcoin that hasn't been there before. Right. And it brings in all of these people who, you know, before, you know, that was magic Internet money. This is this is art, literally even the first wizard said it was magic Internet money. Right. But this is art, music and culture. You don't bet against that. Right. And like that has a power that can transcend. And now what you're seeing is all of these like new a new generation of of uh, of of entrance into the space, uh, un- like learning about Bitcoin, understanding Bitcoin and embracing Bitcoin. Yeah. Absolutely. Udi, to start uh, bringing this to a close, to wrap, start wrapping it up, what can we expect from the Taproot Wizards uh, community? What are, you, what are your plans? The more alpha, the better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what we want to do is we want to we want to build this community of people who are builders and creators mm-hmm. who can carry Bitcoin into, you know, the next five years and the next bull cycle. And um, I I feel like the fact that we did not uh, maybe onboard a ton of new Bitcoiners in the last bull cycle is something that we're going to feel much strongly in five years from now. Uh, we did, we just missed out on a generation and I don't think we can afford missing out on another generation. So we, um, I think that just like, you know, what ended up enabling um, ordinals was this uh, small, uh, you know, technical upgrade uh, that Bitcoin developers made. It's called Taproot. That's where our name comes from. And accidentally it allowed for larger uh, transactions that allowed for larger inscriptions. And we feel like it, this small change by mistake allowed so much activity to come back to the Bitcoin chain. Um, we can probably do more things like that. Mm-hmm. You know, like we can probably do more small things, not massive things. I'm not saying like, hey, let's add solidity support to Bitcoin. That's insane. It's never going to happen. It shouldn't happen um, because Bitcoin's kind of reliability and stability is very important to what it is. But if there are technical ways that we can, similar to how Tapu did it, allow for second layers to exist um, that that will allow on top of them smart contracts, stuff like that, um, then I think that unlocks like massive opportunities that happen in all of those other chains already, but did not happen in Bitcoin yet. So those, you know, those kind of things where like Bitcoin is as an asset is 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 perfect for you know all kinds of decentralized applications. It just didn't have the technical ability to do that. I feel like very similar to how we felt about the wizards early on. We knew we wanted to do that. We knew why, but technically there was no not the solution yet. I think we can, as a community, as we bring in more builders and creators, we can build out those things for Bitcoin too, and and then really expand that ecosystem in a very meaningful way, uh, and really enable a lot of things that people really want to do but still can. And for that, you need a, a strong community that. Um, not only wants these things, but is, you know, creative enough, entrepreneurial enough in order to go and build it. And 
And my kind of thesis has been that this that kind of community has been missing in the Bitcoin space for a while, and that's what we want to build. And that's why you know that's why we've been onboarding people through what we call the 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 Wizard School and the quests. Um, we're trying to be pretty picky about the way we curate people that that you know enter that community. And we're going to have a bunch. You know, we had the famous Wizard Shower quest. We're going to have a bunch more. Um, where the idea is to find, you know, either people are very creative, um, or, you know, a bunch of other very important skills that you need in a community like that. And, and, um, and we're, we're, we're gonna, I think people are, <laughs> some people are expecting like, Hey, you could sell these tomorrow. Like, why are you like, you could, you know, people want these, there's a lot of demand, like just do us mint tomorrow and, and it'll go great. And, and, and it probably will, but that's not what we want. What we want is to build a very strong community around that. That is you know, really cares about the Bitcoin values, really cares about what we're trying to build there. And it's looking great so far, right? Yeah. But um, but we want to continue to grow that. And we're going to try, you know, my kind of, the way I kind of look at um, NFTs, there's a lot of things I, I do really love about them. But also I think in general, business model for NFTs has not really been figured out yet. Of um, course. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, we've had this great period of time where, uh, because it was, you know, a bull market, then everything worked, but that's not right. the case anymore. And the royalties, you know, yeah, the, the dynamic royalties. has changed. Yeah. Yeah. Those things I'm a strong believer are not going to work anymore. And, mm -hmm. and so we, that's why we're very happy to explore new things and not do like the, the usual, oh, let's just mint it out and see what happens. That's, yeah. I'm, I'm not a big believer in that. Um, so we we really do believe in trying all of We're going to try a bunch of like crazy quests. The, the shower one was simple. I'm looking forward, <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Will they continue yeah. to push forward hygiene at scale? <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I was very happy about this particular week in NFT NYC, you know. Um, I feel like we really improved um, just the sense in most of the events that's so amazing, far. Man. I've never yeah. seen a community grow so fast and so strong as... Uh, Thank the you. wizards, man. No, All wizards. right. Without further ado, I think it's time. Oh, it's time. It's time. It's time. Bullish or bearish? Bullish or bearish gamma? No, I'm bullish. Of course I am. Yeah, I mean, you know, Ordinal's marketplaces are definitely going to be a thing. It's going to be very interesting to see how they develop in differently than what they did in Ethereum, because I think they're going to have to. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, Ethereum and if it, uh, marketplaces are figuring things out now. Again, I, have too, to, so. I have to double down on this one. Bullish or bearish, Magic Eden? Also bullish. No, yeah. Okay. I think yeah, the yeah, fact, yeah. Look, the fact yeah. that, that Magic Eden is showing up very early, by the way, to Ordinals, um, is, is one of those very big um, signs that this is, you know, mm -hmm. something something is really happening here. All right. Bullish or bearish, I'm going to bring it back to Ethereum. Crypto dick butts. No, they're great. I can't. You have to be bullish in crypto dick butts. He's got yeah, a high priestess, you know, yeah, yeah, the high no, priestess. Of course. <laughs> no, I, that, I mean, they're, good, they're a great example of a cult that we kind of look up to, you know, like that's, that's kind of what we want to be. That's amazing. Mm. How about this? Bullish or bearish? Uh, D gods on Bitcoin. I mean, you just, you. I, I said I was going to say bullish on everything, but I am, yeah, like, I, I literally am bullish on all those things. Of course, D gods are, no, that, that's amazing. You know, like D gods on Bitcoin. Uh, you know, 12 fold on Bitcoin. Um, uh, who else was it? Oh, uh, maybe now pass. Oh, I don't know. Hey, oh, there's going to be now pass on Bitcoin. Oh, I hear something? I, 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 oh, maybe that's some there's alpha gonna, right there for you guys. You know? I think, I think that, I think that most creators are seeing now that it makes a lot of sense to come over to the, to the Bitcoin side. Um, it, look, anyone who did that, did well. Um, I think, yeah, I think it's a, it's definitely a good idea for now pass. I think it's, a, you know, I think it's a good idea for any creator. That's amazing. All right. And uh, the final one, bullish or bearish NFT now? I said I would be bullish on everything, but you know, <laughs> no, no, no. This is, <laughs> you know what I, you know what I love? Um, I've seen a lot of um, sort of uh, media companies in the crypto space and m most of them are shit. You know, most of them are really bad. Like most of them are like proactively harmful. You know, mm -hmm. and NFT now was a big part of how, how I kind of caught up to NFTs myself um, because I had a lot of catching up to do. And also I feel like it's just quality content. It's just actually helpful, which is truly rare in the crypto space. Ladies and gentlemen, here to yeah. here first. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank no, you. no, Thank I'm you. very bullish. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thank you so much, Yuli, for coming and joining us. Thank, thank you, you so for having much. me. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm actually very glad that we didn't get through any shit posting about us through this process. Oh, you know? yeah. Like, not, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> not yet. He's like, yo, wait a second. Not yet. Um, no, but, I shit posted about my best friends. You know. Yeah. yeah. No, that's fair. But um, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Yuli. We loved having you here, yeah. and super excited to see how we can continue to collaborate and support you through your new journey into ordinals and NFTs and everything else. Amazing. We love the wizards. Yeah. Well, we love NFT now, but the I, I, the wizards are. It's just those people. It's the. It's really all about those people. Yes. Like, yeah, I love the pictures too, but the <laughs> these people are amazing. You yeah. know, the fact the I know I know that I'm I'm gonna wrap it up, but I just have to say that it's like the, you know, we do stuff like the wizard shower, right? And we we think that it's gonna go well, but you never know, right? And then you see the response. And you see a yeah. Mustang in a car wash. Yeah. And then you see a Mustang in a I car wash. Jumping into into streams and rivers and <laughs> uh, yeah, that's yeah. Good. But you see the commitment. It's just you know, it's yeah. it's hard to not even it's tear up a little bit. Too. Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. You know? It's amazing. We'd love to see it. We'd love to see it. Well, excited to see where it all goes. And yeah, uh, yeah. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Wow, that was an amazing conversation. Learned a lot about Taproot Wizards and the history and the lore. I think it just goes to show that sometimes a project or an idea just needs to re reach the right moment to really take off. And it's amazing to see what Udi and co are building uh, on the Bitcoin blockchain with the Ordinals protocol. Uh, keep your eyes posted for a lot more from that crew. Um, well, Taproot Wizards isn't the only tokenized community that Udi's a part of. We are very fortunate and very grateful to call him a member of our NowPass community. If you haven't joined, feel free to pick up an, a NowPass on OpenSea. Uh, we've got a ton of exciting initiatives and, and upcoming announcements in the works. And uh, we will see you again on the NFT Now podcast next week. Baby, when you, when you